Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're gonna keep talking about the windows that make up your workstation in Unity. And today we're gonna to actually be talking about the hierarchy window. So let's get started. All right, so here we have our tutorial project open in Unity and the hierarchy window is currently located right here. It's this taller and skinnier window and you can identify it because the tab up at the top of this window says hierarchy. Now, if you currently don't have the hierarchy open, you can go to the window drop down menu at the top and then click hierarchy. You can also hit control or command four. Once you have the hierarchy window open, you can then anchor it just as you can any of the other windows. Now I would highly recommend that you always have this window open and anchored onto your workstation because it's a very important window that you're gonna be using all the time when you're developing video games. Now to give you a simple definition of what the hierarchy window is, the hierarchy window is a window used to create objects, and it's also a window used to display the hierarchy of your video game. Now, if you don't know what a hierarchy is, a hierarchy is essentially a list of things, but it's more than just a list of things. It's a list of things that have parent-children relationships. Now, parent-child relationships are vital to game development, and it's something that you're going to be using all the time. Now, parent-child relationships are essentially taking one or multiple objects and making them a child to another object, which is the parent. And what this means is if you do anything to the parent object, it can end up directly affecting the children objects as well. Now, it's important to note that the children objects will move within the local space of the parent object, and the zeroed out transform of the children objects will be on the pivot of the parent object and the zeroed out transform of the children objects will be on the pivot of the parent object. Now we'll talk more about parent-children relationships when we get into transforms. But now let's look at the hierarchy window and all its features. Now right below the hierarchy window, we have this button here that says create, and it's a drop-down menu. Now this is one of the main ways to create new objects into your scene. Now there's a pretty big list here of standard objects that Unity provides that you can create into your scene. And we're gonna cover each one of these standard objects in a later video. But for now, let's go ahead and create a few basic shapes and add them into our scene. So I'm gonna to go to 3D objects and I'm gonna create a cube. And then we can go to 3D objects and create a sphere. And then let's go 3D objects and create a capsule. Now you can see that we have each of these objects in our scene. And that leads us into the next part of the hierarchy window. So right below the create button, you're gonna see some bolded text. And in this case, it says untitled, and it has a little asterisk, and it's next to a Unity logo and a drop down arrow. Now this is a category in the hierarchy window. And this category represents the current scene. Now because I haven't saved the scene as anything in the asset folder, it's listed as untitled and it has an asterisk next to it. Now, if I were to go ahead and save this scene, I'm gonna go file, save scene as, and then I'm just gonna name this as uh, scene one. You can now see that we have this scene in the project window, which we'll talk about in the next video, but our category has now changed from untitled to scene one. Now it's possible that you're gonna have a number of different categories in your hierarchy. You can have the current scene category, and then you can also load in other scenes to the current scene, and those are gonna have its own categories. And then you can also have categories like do not destroy on load. Now the helpful feature about these categories is that you can collapse them by clicking on the arrow to the left of the Unity logo. And so if I click that arrow, you can now see that all the listed objects below it are not visible. And I can reveal them by once again clicking on the arrow. So this is helpful because if you want to only look at the objects that are contained within, say, the do not destroy on load category, you can collapse all the other categories except for that one and look specifically at the objects contained within inside that category. But let's move on to the objects within the categories. Now each one of these rows underneath our scene category represents an individual game object within the environment of our scene. So currently we have five individual game objects within our scene. And these five game objects correspond to the five game objects that we have in the environment of our scene that you can see in the scene window. 
So currently we have a main camera in our hierarchy and you can see that when I selected the main camera in the hierarchy, it also selected the camera in our scene because they're the same object. The next object is the directional light, which is also in our scene. Now these two objects are default game objects that are created every time you create a new scene, but you can modify these game objects as much as you want. Now the next three game objects are the three game objects that we created earlier. So we created a cube, a sphere, and a capsule. And these three game objects correspond to the cube the sphere, and the capsule that appear in our scene. So it's important to note that all the objects that will be listed in your hierarchy directly correspond to a specific object in the environment of your scene. Now every time you add an object to your hierarchy, it's going to have a given name. So in this case, we have a cube, a sphere, a capsule. These are all names that the standard object came with. Now you can edit these names as much as you want by selecting the object once and then clicking once more on the object, it will then prompt you to change its name. Now, if I want this to be the player, I can then type in player and hit enter. And then that will be the new name for that object. Now it's important to keep your hierarchy organized. And the best way to do that is through good naming conventions. Now over time, if you're working by yourself, you'll come up with your own naming convention and probably every single game you create will have different naming convention. But if you're working on a team, it's important that you become familiar with the naming convention that your team is working with. Now I've seen a number of different naming conventions. I've seen people use underscores to replace spaces. I've also seen people put underscores at the beginning of the names of certain objects. Personally, I tend to just remove all spaces and put a capital letter at the beginning of each word. Now another part about keeping your hierarchy organized is changing the order of the objects in your hierarchy. Now you can do this by simply clicking on an object and then dragging it up or down throughout the hierarchy. Now there's two different forms of moving an object in the hierarchy. You can see here that I have a thin blue line going in between the cube and the sphere. And this indicates that I'm going to move the player object to in between the cube and the sphere in the hierarchy. And so right there you can see now the player is in between the cube and the sphere. The other form is if I click and drag the sphere and I cursor over the player object, you can see that now the player object is highlighted in a blue bubble. This is the method to child an object to another object. So if I release the mouse click, you can now see that the sphere is indented and the player now has a drop down arrow next to it. So this means that the player object is now apparent to the sphere and the sphere is now a child to the player. Now reordering the objects in your hierarchy doesn't often affect the scene and therefore your game. But however, there is one instance in which I can think where the order does matter and that is dealing with user interface. So if I were to create a new user interface, I can demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to say create UI for user interface and then I'm going to create an image and then I'm going to create another image. So I'm going to, let's just duplicate this image. So now I have two images and if I focus them in my scene, you can see that I have two squares. And if I move them both up, so I have two white squares. I have this square and this square. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color so you can see them a little bit better. I'm going to have one be red and one be blue. Now currently these images aren't overlapping on each other, so the order really doesn't matter. But if I were to move one of these objects so that it's overlapping the other object, you can now see that the blue object is overlapping the red object. Now if I were to change the order of these objects in the hierarchy, I would then change the order in which these objects are layered. So now the red image is overlapping on top of the blue image. Other than this example, I can't think of any other example where the order of the objects in the hierarchy directly affects the scene. Now it's still important that your hierarchy is organized to maximize your workflow. And the second best way to do that behind a good naming convention is a good order of your objects. Now the last tip that I want to share with you for this video is something called focusing. Now in our scene view video, we talked about focusing on objects in the scene where if I have an object selected, so say this blue square image, if I were then to hit F on the keyboard, 
my camera would then center its orbiting pivot on that object. Similar to this feature in the scene view, we can focus on objects in the hierarchy. So say I have a really long list of objects in my hierarchy, and I want to find that object in the hierarchy, but I can only find it in my scene because the list is so long. So one thing that I can do is I can select an object in the scene, and then if I cursor over onto the hierarchy and press F, you can then see how the object in the hierarchy was then highlighted in yellow. Not only will it highlight the object in yellow, but it'll also make it so that you can see that object in the hierarchy. So if you've selected the object in your scene view, but it's further down your list and it's not currently visible in your hierarchy, you can then press F and then the hierarchy will scroll to the position of that object in the hierarchy. So that's everything that we wanted to cover in this video talking about the hierarchy window. Now there's a little bit more information that you can find out by clicking on our level up video at the end of this video. I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified when we publish new videos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.